the one thing that, that doesn't get talked about enough is the emotional state, right? The psychological state. I love the idea of Blue Mind. I love the idea of, uh, of just what it is and, and how easy you can actually tap into that. So tell us a little bit so we can understand you also talk about gray mind and you talk about red mind. Will you share what just the difference is? Empowering you organically, delivering content you trust with results you love. Welcome everyone to another episode of Empowering You Organically. I'm joined by my co-host, Terry Antrevenin. Hey everyone. We have a very special guest with us today, Dr. Wallace J. Nichols. He's the creator of Blue Mind, which we're gonna get into here in just a second. But we're actually doing another virtual podcast here. We weren't able to have uh, Dr. Wallace here in the studio with us, so we're doing this virtually over Zoom. And Terry, why don't you give us a quick bio on Dr. Wallace Certainly. and tell us more about him. Yes, I will. He is called the Keeper of the Sea by GQ Magazine and Visionary by Outside Magazine, featured in Time, PBS, and many other media outlets. He's an entrepreneurial scientist, movement maker, voracious idea explorer, New York Times bestselling author, international speaker, loving dad, and strategic advisor and collaborator. He created the phenomenon Blue Mind, a powerful new universal story of water and a movement of global proportions. In this, he shares the cognitive, emotional, psychological, social, and spiritual benefits of how being near in or on water can change your brain state and be a powerful wellness tool. Blue Mind Health is an amazing free documentary series created to show how you can get energized, create more joy in your life, and revitalize your health with Blue Mind, a concept we're very excited to talk about today. So to kick things off, why don't we talk a little bit about what Blue Mind is? And there's also Red Mind and Gray Mind. Will you touch on those three things? Yes. Yeah, great. It's really um, nice to see you and nice to be here and uh, having this conversation. You know, likewise. Um, so Blue Mind it refers to this kind of mildly meditative kind of relaxed state we 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 move into when we're near in on or underwater or when we're thinking about those things so you can close your eyes and imagine your water wherever that is maybe a, a bath a shower a pond a lake a river an ocean a spa um, a nice rainy afternoon or uh, even uh, snow is water and fog. And that will put you in, in, you're probably already thinking about it right now and you're probably feeling exactly what we're talking about. So there's science backing up how water shifts our mental state, our emotional state, how it calms us and centers us, how it connects us to each other in the best possible ways uh, and even boosts creativity. And We've been pulling that science together, um, taking it further, and then trying to make it available uh, to as many people as possible, just as a, a tool for your toolbox, for your life, uh, throughout, throughout your entire life. So that's Blue Mind. Yeah. How, so how did you come up with this? I mean, how, how did you, what started, what was the inspiration? And yeah, share, share the background a little bit. Yeah, so I think I'm, I'm like a lot of people. Um, I, I felt this way as a kid. I had, uh, you know, as a kid, I, I, I was stuttered. Um, I didn't like to, to speak to people because it made them uncomfortable and made me uncomfortable. So I, I really liked being in the water or underwater in particular because nobody talks to you when you're underwater. Um, I became a marine biologist and I noticed that whenever I was with people by the water, there was just a level of contentment and happiness uh, that went up. And as a scientist, I kind of became curious uh, about what was going on. And I went looking for a book about it so that I could learn more, so that I could apply it to my work. And when I went looking for the book, uh, I didn't find any books on it. So I thought, okay, somebody needs to write this book. I, I'll convince some smart people to do it. And uh, I failed at that. Um, everybody said, no, thanks. So then it fell back to me, you know, when you, when you find a vacuum, you fill it, uh, if you're a, a curious, outgoing person. And so I felt like that, that became my job to fill this, fill this niche, I guess. And so five years later, the book was published. And now five years after that, we're 
sharing the story with literally billions of people. And so that's kind of the quick version. Yeah, for sure. And, and I don't think anybody can argue, right? When you talk about, you know, how do you feel when you're by the ocean or when you're out at the lake? And, I mean, I, I love snowboarding. How do I feel when I'm on the mountain or on the snow? I mean, there's undeniably a calming feeling, a grounded feeling, a relaxed feeling. And, and it's interesting because a lot of times on our podcast, we're talking about things for your body. We're talking about exercise. We're talking about supplements. We're talking about food and, and uh, nutrients and different things that your body needs. But the one thing that, that doesn't get talked about enough is the emotional state, right? The psychological state. And I just, I love the idea of Blue Mind. I love the idea of, uh, of just what it is and, and how easy you can actually tap into that. So tell us a little bit so we can understand. You also talk about gray mind and you talk about red mind. Will you share what just the differences? Definitely. So, well, the, so the first thing you mentioned there uh, was how intuitive and obvious this concept is, right? You, you experience it throughout your life. Um, and some people have said, why it's so obvious and so intuitive. Why do we even need to be talking about it? Why do, why do we need a book about it? Why do we need research? And that's a fair point. But the reality is whether we're talking about exercise, food, uh, reducing stress, we all need reminders. You need reminders. I need reminders. And this is our job and we need reminders. So, Everybody on the planet I've ever met needs to be reminded of these simple intuitive things on a daily basis almost. It's so easy to, to, to let things slip away. So that's kind of, kind of one main point. Um, we, we know gravity intuitively. If you, if you drop a book, it falls down, but we still study it. And because we study it, we've been able, been able to put people on the moon. And so physicists study gravity. We study human emotion. And so in, in that inquiry, we've identified, we sort of color coded uh, these three emotional states. And this is an oversimplification of the complexities of our emotional lives, certainly, but it gives us a handle uh, and, and a way to talk about how we're feeling. So we talked about blue mind, but the polar opposite is red mind. And that is your, your wired, you're dialed in, you're overconnected, you're, um, striving towards goals. It's kind of our normal base state in modern society. There's too much information um, coming at us all the time for modern humans. Uh, we, we don't know where our off switch is. It affects our sleep. It affects our performance. It affects our relationships. Uh, it, it affects our, our physical well-being, our emotional well-being. That's red mind. It's actually quite necessary. You need, you need to have a red mind sometimes to, to win. Uh, to, to get to the finish line, to reach your goals. Um, we're not saying red mind is bad, but if it's all you have, you will burn out. Guarantee it. You will hit the wall and burn out. And when you burn out, that's gray mind. And while red mind and blue mind are useful, uh, gray mind is pretty worthless. It's just the burnt out, indifferent, numbed out, disconnected, don't care much about anything anymore state uh, mildly depressed or even severely depressed and we've all been there too where you're just spent and and that may last an afternoon it may last days weeks months and even years uh, and that's gray mind so we want to we want to stay out of that gray mind mode we want to use all the tools available you mentioned exercise diet supplements um, social interactions and the beauty of nature, being out, being in awe and wonder out in the water, out on the mountain, um, moving your body outside. So that's really the, that's kind of the, the three, three part um, color coded uh, emotional message there, blue, red, and gray. And how does blue mind look for someone who's healthy, emotionally balanced, mentally, physically balanced? What does blue mind look like in that scenario for people and how are they um, utilizing blue mind in their life if they're in that good space. Yeah, so people that are, would, you know, I would say are the, you know, the true believers and are practicing blue mind, they're prioritizing what their water time. They're prioritizing their downtime. They know they need restoration. That may be sleep. That may mean a, a long soaking bath. Um, that may even be a mindful shower. So you know, instead of just hopping in and out of the shower and doing your job in there, uh, getting clean, 
take a minute, take 30 seconds and just really feel the way that water is hitting you on the back of the neck. Really feel how it's, you know, uh, impacting your nervous system. Um, lean in, lean into your water. Uh, and then you can kind of go bigger. You can go to a, a float spa perhaps and do an hour or 90 minute float sensory deprivation tank experience. Many elite athletes and high performance people are doing that. Or take a weekend vacation, unplug and get out on a river, get out on a lake, get up on the mountain with the snow, uh, get to the beach and just make sure you prioritize that throughout your life. And it really isn't uh, about living a luxurious life in, in the financial sense necessarily. All these things are, are available to all of us in, in one way or another. So, that's what I see the people who are putting it in, into practice. The other piece of it that's super important uh, is the service piece. So when your lake, river, ocean, mountain, water gives you some of the best moments of your day and of your life, what are you going to give back? Are you going to become a water warrior? Are you going to be someone who's out there who's leaving the place better than you found it? Uh, are you going to clean it up? Are you going to be a, a member? maybe the founder of a Save the River project, or maybe you're gonna be an educator. So that's the, that's the piece where it gets really, really pretty cool. That's the regenerative feedback loop. When, when, the, when Blue Mind is giving you so much, you feel like you wanna give back. And, and we find that, that that sense of awe and wonder we feel in nature uh, boosts our empathy and our compassion. And when we feel that empathy and compassion, we want to help each other and we want to help fix what's broken. And so it's this beautiful feedback loop that happens. And when you're down in red mind and you're just, you know, stressing it out and you're, you're getting this tunnel vision, you're not thinking about helping anybody. You're just thinking about getting through. It's the fight or, fight or flight response uh, that's, that's triggered throughout our, throughout our day, really. Uh, in, in ways in modern humans that wasn't always happening uh, throughout human history. So, Keeping Blue Mind in mind uh, on a daily basis, and it may literally mean, mean stepping in into a bath or uh, putting on some ocean sounds to help you fall asleep, um, or hanging up a piece of artwork that reminds you of that, that water that you love uh, in, your, you know, in your home. So those yeah, are I, love, I love the concept because water, I feel like we live in a society where we're so desensitized we like live on a screen and we've lost human interaction and touch and, and just all of these sensations in our lives. And I love this concept of water. I was really excited to talk to you today because I love water. And I think water is such a beautiful thing. Oftentimes like water will just be running when I'm doing dishes and I love to run my hands through it. I love how it feels. I love how it sounds. I love to be on the water. I always have. And it's this concept is such a beautiful concept because I feel like it's a matter of feeling things, a sensory thing where you're, you're in touch with something natural again, and you're feeling it. You know, the other day I went out for a run and it was raining and, and it was just lightly raining. It was like a mist. And I love that rain on my face. It connects you with nature and reality and yourself in a way, or when you get in the shower or the bath or you're out in the ocean, you're touching something, you're feeling something it's being connected to something physically. And I think that it's such a beautiful concept of thinking of people using that to heal and to have a balance in their lives because we've lost so much of that. We've lost so much connection to people and nature and, and just things physically. Um, it, it really is a very powerful concept. So tell me this, how can Blue Mind work with conventional medicine and medicine when people are going through something and they're needing to heal or they've got something going on in their lives physically and um, how can those two things combine together to work together? Yeah, I, that's a really good question. I, I think the, um, the rule for me is, is always add water. So whatever the, whatever the recommendation is, whatever the prescription is, add water. So add another glass of water to your meal, uh, add some more water time. Uh, add some, add a bath. So if, if you're, uh, if you're dealing with a disease, a disorder, an injury, an illness, and you're, you're getting uh, medical care. And by the way, I'm a marine biologist. I'm not a doctor. So you can listen to me through that filter. I just want to be really clear, but sub, it's a supplemental complementary plus one situation. So adding water to any 
any prescription or, or any, any guidance that you get from your, your health practitioner is always going to be good. So if, if the um, recommendation is more exercise, take it into the water. You can put your exercise bike uh, in the water. People are doing that. Uh, the special, special exercise bikes, not every exercise bike will, will thrive in the water. So um, you can bring your weightlifting regime, your resistance training into the water. You can walk laps. Uh, if, if you're recovering from an injury, do it in the water. Uh, if, you're, if your issue is stress-related, which 60% of diseases, disorders, and illnesses are related to stress, 60%, that's the majority. If stress is part of what's going on in, in your, your unhealth, get in the water and just chill out daily if you can. And whether that's a, a, a spa situation or uh, at home in a, in a, in a tub. Um, so I just say, say to everyone, just add, add this blue mind thing to whatever your, your health regimen is. And I, well, I can't promise anything. I, I, I imagine, and what I've seen from everyone that's done that is positive, at least a little bit positive, and sometimes extremely so. So, um, and we've seen with with you know veterans and first responders dealing with post traumatic stress, uh, debilitating levels of anxiety, uh, that water can really really help them, as as one of the tools in their toolbox. Whether it's surfing, kayak fishing, uh, float tanks, or all of the above. It helps, um, and, and these men and women, they're the ones who are serving us even when we don't know it. Like they're running, running towards the sound of bullets and bombs on our behalf. Uh, so they need it the most. At-risk youth, we see um, a whole, whole range of benefits. Uh, some kids that have never experienced peace of mind for their entire childhood, they get in the river with a mask and snorkel and a camera and they experience peace of mind for the first time in their life. Wow, like holy crap. Imagine, imagine that life. Uh, and now they know that water is their medicine. Now they know it, not because they learned it in a book or they saw it on TV. They learned it because they did it. Uh, so we are right around the, you know, the whole spectrum of, of things that are, are broken or people who need, need some help, we find that water helps them and i'm kind of ecumenical so i i would say snow and ice yes lakes and rivers yes uh, oceans and bays of course uh, showers and bathtubs right on float spas and other spas swimming pools uh, water parks waterfalls yes to all of it and your point that the, wa the water embraces us right it holds us and sometimes we need to be held sometimes we're not being held. Uh, it is, it's as intimate as a relationship as you can possibly have with anything because it's, it's enveloping. It goes, it goes everywhere. It touches you everywhere. There's a sink under that water. It's, it's in your nose. It's in your ears. It's in your mouth. It's in your eyes. It's in your pores. Um, that's amazing. You know, uh, people like to kind of go back to the, the womb experience that we all most, most of us had for about 9.21 months, um, that warm bath called mom, that warm ocean called your mama. Um, wow, that was, we all had that experience of that warm, um, salty water and swimming around in there for nine months. And that's kind of how it feels. And uh, I think you're lying if you'd say you don't need some of that uh, in your life. You know, everybody does. And it's super restorative and, and more than that. So the people who are feeling pretty good already and they add it, it's, it's going to go to the next level. Their performance, it, whatever they do, will be enhanced. Uh, their creativity will bump up. Um, health will even improve. And it's, you know, it's not a silver bullet fix to anything. It's just, you know, kind of like you said earlier, exercise and eating well right? 30 years ago that was that was far out kind of california thinking uh doctors might roll their eyes at you if you said hey uh here's some some good ideas exercise uh and eating real food 
is good for you. That was kind of fringe. Now it's totally mainstream. And these ideas will be too, probably within a decade, if we do our job right. I love hearing you talk about it, really. I mean, it's, <clears throat> as I hear you talk about it, and I'm sure many others, it, it brings up just memories for me. And I think back to times when I'm in the lake, I love being in the lake, I love stand up jet skis and, and being on the lake or wakeboarding, or think back to times I've gone snorkeling, or I think to the snowboard, like all of these things come up to me. And those are the times that I'm actually able to unplug the most. Right. When I'm snowboarding, you know, at least while I'm riding down the mountain is a time when I can be away from business and the kids and, and the stress and everything, you know, in life. And it's the same thing when I'm at the lake or, or different things like that. So um, it's very intuitive. Right. It just makes sense when you hear it. And, and you were talking very early on. I mean, we, we do have to talk about, you know, you are what you eat. We have to talk about exercise. We have to talk about all these things that we know are good for us. Right but we still talk about them a lot because we're not doing them. And so I love this conversation. I love the idea of being around water more. And I, I, I maybe there's some people that, that just aren't, you know, uh, responsive to it, but I don't think there's going to be many. I think most people think about it or go back to that time and, and they could just see how it can make a difference. So, and you've talked about having just pictures up of water or things like that. Is it just, the act of being in the water. So, right, like there's times that I'm in the water and I'm doing a sport, right? Or I, I'm, I'm focused on doing something. Or is it more the act of being mindful when I'm in the water about relaxing and being in the water? I mean, do we know, is there a difference there? Is it just the fact of being around the water? Can you talk more on that at all? Yeah, so you, you can bring your red mind to your blue mind water experience. And so when you do in, you know, extreme sports, say, you know, on a jet ski, surfing, uh, any kind of skiing, uh, even open water swimming or, you know, uh, sailing with, with, a, with a strong wind, there's an adrenaline rush, no doubt. This isn't, you're not closing your eyes and meditating, hopefully, uh, you're paying close attention. But in doing that, you're so incredibly focused on, on the task at hand and you're surrounded by water. So there's this, there's this kind of, if I fall, I land in the water sense. Um, but it's, that's the good kind of stress. Like that's the high performance stress that we're, we're, we're built to do. Uh, it's, the, it's the chronic social and psychological stress that just eats you up, that never goes away, that, is, that leads to gray mind. But those, those high performance uh, red mind moments are part of being a, an active um, healthy human being, right? So whether it's, you know, think about thousands of years ago, you're just trying to catch something to eat, right? There's that red mind mode, and then you, you perform, and then you succeed, right? Uh, or trying to escape from a predator, right? Those are all, this is the good stress. Um, so bringing that to the water is, is really, really good for us, really fun. I mean, the fun factor is, you know, on the water is just through the roof. Right, whether it's a water slide. You know, I like to say a balloon is fun. A water balloon is a party, right? A slide is great. A water slide, bring it. You know, just add water to any of those things. It, you know, it's a, uh, it, it adds a, an element that just raises the fun factor. So, all, you know, there's, a, there's all, all of that kind of going on. But I think it's also the, it's the up and then the down. So the, the pauses between uh, between the action so think about surfing like when you catch a wave it's, it's all on you're you're everything's functioning and you're hyper focused on just that one thing and then it ends and then you paddle out and you sit on your board and you wait and you may see an, if you're here in, in Monterey Bay you may see an otter uh, you may see a dolphin you may look off and see a whale spout you may see some birds you may see a fin a fish you may chat with someone um, there's that, that meditative lull and then there's another set that comes in and you get ready and then your red mind kicks in, the healthy red mind and you make it or you don't and then you do it again. And so there's this, this nice, um, I call it creative disequilibrium rather than balance uh, because it has these big highs and then these calms. And so I think that's kind of, kind of what you're referring to a little bit there. Um, 
enjoying those moments. I think reflecting back as you did right there, just throughout your life, you can, you can point to your blue mind days and string them together and just get really happy thinking about those things. Uh, I think there's another point. Not, not everybody has had those experiences. So one, one of our jobs is to break down some of the barriers. Uh, there are people who, like my mom, scared to swim. She was scared of water. Uh, I've spent my life trying to get her in the water with us. And um, those, those people, those moments um, of joy when they break through that barrier, they say, I'm, I'm afraid of water, I can't swim. I say, take my hand, uh, climb on my back, put on this floaty, and let's, let's do this safely. And let's see if we can work through it. Um, so if there's anybody in your life who... Uh, doesn't have access to their blue mind because of some uh, some barrier to that access. Uh, that's really fun. Take them with you. Next time you go to the lake, grab somebody and say, hey, I'm going to the lake. Uh, I know you're not a water person, but I want you to do this with me today. And I've got all the gear. It's going to be safe. It's going to be fun. And, uh, you know, expand this blue mind stuff to people who need it, you know, who don't have access to it. That's part of our mission. Well, just being around the water, right? So even if they're scared to get in it, just being out on the boat, being at the beach, just being surrounded by it is a calming feeling as well, correct? Absolutely. So I would say, you know, that it's a, there's a whole, there's a continuum, right? So if I said, if I said, what's your water? And you start thinking about it, that begins a neurological cascade in your imagination that begins that blue mind process. We don't even have to be near the water. All I have to do is ask you that, that simple, you know, three word question, what's your water? And you begin to have those, you know, memories and that imagination. Then you can go to the glass of water, the kitchen sink, having your hands in the water. You can go into the bathroom and the shower, the bath. And then it, you can go bigger than that. You can go to the larger bodies of water. And then the epic sort of extreme blue mind would be probably something like floating on your back in a warm ocean, watching shooting stars while the bioluminescence in the ocean is all around you. Some sort of mind blowing kind of awesome extreme. Maybe a, a dolphin jumps over you or something. I don't know. Just completely off, off the chart. But it's a continuum from, from the... Uh, merely imaginary to the extreme experiential and everything in between. And I guess the message is just add more of all of it to your life in, in whatever way that you can. Uh, if that means stopping on your commute, if you typically drive by a pond and you've never checked it out, check it out. Uh, if you go over a bridge on your commute, look, up, look out, keep your eyes on the road, but also have a look at the water. And uh, take a little break during lunch and walk out to any water that's nearby and just look at it. Maybe there's a turtle or there's some ducks. I don't know. Just find, find the water in your life and, and put it to good work because it's everywhere. And everywhere we live, there's lakes, rivers, oceans, creeks, ponds, pools. Um, and they, they need us and we need them. Yeah, so... I want to ask you, I, I love this concept and it's funny as we've been talking about it, I've been thinking about water a lot and it does, it's very calming. Like I think about my experiences and I think about what I've been through and it does it immediately puts your brain into this state of mind thinking about the water. And, and I love the concept, as I said before. So obviously this has been a journey for you and you've been going down this path and now it's becoming your life's work. What are the most important things that come to your mind when I ask you, um, what people, what, what, what people should know, what are like the top three things that come to your mind that you've learned on this journey that have been so eye opening for you that have changed your life that have made it your life's work. What are those things that just pop out right when I say that, like it's changed your life on, on so many levels going on this journey, experiencing this, learning this and seeing how it's impacting people. Yeah. I would say one big idea that I find myself repeating often and it gets people's attention is that emotional health is the basis of sustainability 
and whatever you mean by sustainability. If you mean sustaining your family, sustaining your business, sustaining life on planet Earth, um, if the emotional health is missing, you, you will not achieve sustainability. Right? So for your team, for any relationship, uh, you, can, you can throw a lot of things at this idea of sustainability, but emotional health is at the core. And this blue mind idea can help with your emotional health. So that concept is largely absent from most conversations about sustainability. We, you know, as we said earlier, emotional health is often skipped over. Uh, we look at economic health and ecological health and physical health but we just kind of skip over the emotional health, which frankly is it's the basis of everything. If you're not emotionally healthy, forget it. Like you better get to work on that. Um, so that's, that's one big idea that I, that I would share. Um, the other one is, is that if we, getting the value equation, right? When we, so it's connected to that last statement, but when we undervalue anyone or anything, bad things happen. Uh, every time, right, throughout history, whether we're talking about people, places, waterways, mountains, forests, uh, that's just a true statement. So our job is to get that value equation right, to properly value, not overvalue, but certainly not undervalue uh, the different components of, of life and society. Um, sometimes we overvalue people. Right? We think they're more more important than they are. We see that in a lot of celebrity culture. Um, sometimes products can be overvalued and maybe out of reach or um, inappropriately valued. But when you get that value equation right, it's a beautiful thing. And that's when, that's when uh, the world sings, right? Uh, and when we get it wrong, bad things happen. So that's part of what we're doing is trying to fix the value equation around water and emotional health and to bring, bring that knowledge to everyone. Uh, and I guess the third thing I've been somewhat obsessed about is this idea of uh, common knowledge. So when something moves from private knowledge or shared knowledge into the realm of common knowledge that we all, we all know, I know that you know that I know, and you know that I know that you know, <laughs> then that our conversation goes to the next level. So, just knowing who you are and what you stand for before we met and you the same with me, we have a, a set of common knowledge where we, we begin and we can begin our conversation as we did at this, at this higher level. We want Blue Mind to be common knowledge, not privately held knowledge. We want everybody, 7.7 .7 billion people and growing uh, to understand Blue Mind. However, we do that. So conversations with you reaching your community, uh, conversations at health conferences or hospice conferences or sea turtle conferences, reaching those communities. Uh, so this, this idea of common knowledge is really, really fascinating. Um, when we have common knowledge, collaboration goes way up. When you hold private knowledge and you, I know that you know things that I don't know and vice versa, collaboration goes way down. And there's some pretty interesting research being done at Harvard on, on the psychology of common knowledge. So that's the third thing. So um, I, love that, I love that you shared all of those because it's funny, as you were sharing each one, I was thinking about how they have a relationship to water. You talked about emotional, you talked about balance, you talked about sharing, and your whole concept of Blue Mind, if you think about water, as we talked about earlier, it's everywhere and we need it and it holds us. And it's just interesting because it's like, as people being balanced is so critical, sharing, giving, having balance, having emotional stability. And it's all symbolic of water when you talk about it. I thought about it, but that's where my brain is in the conversation and water brings balance or it can bring chaos. Um, but when it's in that place that it brings us peace, it brings a lot of peace to our life and water is very giving too. And I loved how you said earlier that water holds us. So all these things you've taken away, you know, they can all be symbolically tied to water in a sense. And I just think that's really beautiful imagery of what water can do for us and how we too need to have that in our lives, that balance, that giving, that holding people, sharing common knowledge, sharing what we have to offer. 
And I think we feel that through water. So I think that's a beautiful, just beautiful imagery of those things that you learn in looking at water and how it impacts people. Yeah, and I, I mean, I love the, the shared knowledge becoming common knowledge. That's, that's something that we're trying to do here, right, with the podcast is share as much knowledge as we can. So hopefully it becomes common knowledge because it really raises the consciousness of humanity, right? And, and it, it allows us to get to new levels. Um, and, and before we wrap up, I, I want to talk about one last thing. You're talking about balance. And can you share with me, because I imagine it's something you're very passionate about, how human health is connected to the health of the ocean, right? Ocean's the biggest body of water that's out there, right? Most of our planet. Can we talk about that? Because I, I think that a lot of times there's lip service, but I think there needs to be some reality checks going on here with what we're doing to, to the environment and to the oceans and how that's really affecting our human health. Yeah, so when, when we, generally when we communicate about ocean health, um, the, the talking points we often refer to ecological health and our physical health and the economic health and all of those things are true. The ocean is maybe the biggest driver of our economy. And most people may not pause to think about that very often, but, it, but it's true. It's the single biggest feature of planet Earth. 71% of the planet is covered by ocean. Uh, it holds the most life, the most diversity, and it's the source of life. So it's the, it's the economic driver of our planet. Um, ecologically, it's obviously very important. And from an educational perspective, you know, whether it's metaphor, ocean metaphors, or just learning about ocean science, uh, there's this educational component. Um, and here, this is kind of what we've been talking about this whole time, the emotional health component. So it's a big source of emotional health. Uh, I like to you know, ask people how many, if you can imagine that, imagine you could measure stress in tons, right? Just bear with me for a minute. Um, if stress was measurable in, in ounces, pounds, and tons, how much stress has the ocean and, and your water pulled out of you in your life? Just make up a number. Is it five pounds, 20 tons? I don't know. All right, so some number, just totally. Sure. 10 pounds, right? 10 pounds of stress been sucked out of you during your life. Okay, now multiply that times all the people who have had 10 pounds of stress pulled out permanently. The ocean doesn't really throw it back into you randomly during the day. It takes it away and it's gone. Uh, now multiply that times all people throughout human history who have had 10, that 10 pounds of stress taken away and, and disposed of, so to speak. All right, wow, that's a lot of, that's a big service. How much is that worth? Trillions of dollars of- It's of, a fascinating way to, to measure it and look at sure. it. It's fascinating. It, it, when, when I was like, all right, now he's gonna multiply my 10 times the 7 billion people, but then you talk about human history. Yeah. Right? How, how much is it taking to pass off for, for as long as we've been around? And that it, it's, yeah, it, it's a very fascinating way to look at it. So then the next piece is, okay, let's take all that stress that the ocean and our lakes and rivers have removed from humanity. And let's just throw it back into us. Let's just take, say, what if the ocean, lakes, and the river said, hey, we're giving it back. Here it is. Put it back in. It just sticks it right in your heart, right in your brain. You got those 10 pounds back. How does that feel? What does that look like? That's red mind to an extreme. Like we will, we will be just exploding, right? Uh, in, in not a good way. Um, so then let's go back to that better scenario where the ocean keeps it and takes it away. And that's, that's the undervalued aspect of emotional, of, of ocean health, is its role in our emotional lives. That stress that it removes affects every single cell in our body, every single thing we do, our creativity, our relationships, our wellness, everything, how we interact with everybody and how we interact with everything is affected by that, that, that stress reduction. So to kind of get to your question, the reason why I'm going down this road is now imagine you go to the ocean for your daily um, well-being regime, whatever it is, a beach walk, let's just keep it simple, and it's trashed. 
there's trash. Instead of a beautiful beach that you wanted to come to, you go there and it just pisses you off. It grosses you out. You get angry at people you don't even know. You start spinning out on not liking people anymore. Or then you start cleaning it up. But now you're spending your day doing a beach cleanup of, of gross trash that you, weren't, you were planning on coming and chilling out and having your blue mind moment. Now you're in red mind. And then that's how you spent your day instead of restoring. So that, imagine you go to the beach and there's an oil spill like we had in, in the Gulf of Mexico. That will rob you of your blue mind. So it puts more red mind into your life rather than the blue mind. So when, when we keep our lakes, rivers, and oceans healthy, they give us so much. The economic, the ecological, and the emotional health benefits are massive. And they're just available. You all have to do is show up. But when we wreck the place, it takes that away. And when we undervalue that emotional piece, it doesn't become part of our, our equation. It doesn't become part of our conversation. It doesn't become part of what we teach kids and you know, college students and grad students. Uh, it doesn't become part of our management and our policies. It's just missing. And that's, that's the, I think, the, what's so game-changing about this conversation is when we bring it back in, we'll, we'll look at water differently. We'll say, okay, I, this water makes me happy, but I know that it makes me well, that it helps me be a better version of myself, that it helps me manage my stress uh, if I take care of it, right? If I take care of it. Uh, so it's, it's a give-take. And... Um, we, you know, I, we can spend a, a week talking about the ocean crisis, and I spend a lot of time working on various aspects of the problems, whether it's overfishing or plastic pollution, uh, you know, warming oceans, um, a whole range of, of things that are not, not fun to talk about. Um, that's all real, and I think we'll, we will be able to do a better job uh, solving those problems when we bring the blue mind science to the table. That's my hope. Yeah. Love it. I, this is amazing. This is probably one of my more favorite interviews that we've done yet. Um, I love, I, I love it. I love the connection that you made. I loved how you brought everything back full circle to what happens if you go out on the beach and it's trashed or the oil spills and all of that. And, and it's less, I mean, I, Call it selfish, whatever, but may, maybe it's not about you want to save the fish or save the whales. Maybe it's not about this or that. Maybe you just need a selfish reason. Absolutely. And hey, if that keeps you from trashing the oceans, then great. You know, whatever reason that may be. Yeah. But, but I just, I, I don't, I've never made such a connection between my emotional well-being and water mm -hmm. that you have brought to light during this interview. And it's something that I'll keep, keep with me forever. Like I'm, I'm very excited to be a lot more present when I'm around water. I'm very excited to be much more present to make sure that I have more water in my life on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, I, I don't know. I, I love this interview. I wish we were in person and we could keep going. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, do you have anything you want to, you want to wrap up? To no, I mean, I think I loved your top three takeaways and I love this concept. I agree with Jonathan, you know, it, it just, I think you talking about earlier, bringing this concept to people and bringing it to their minds, making them more focused on it, how everyone needs to hear it. You know, we have this knowledge we need to share. And I don't think that we think enough about the world around us and how it impacts us, but water specifically is such a huge part. We start out in the women water. We're made up of water. Water is all around us. I just watched this documentary the other day about water in the Amazon rainforest and how much water is needed there. And then it goes up in the air and goes other places and gives so much back. I mean, water is everywhere. And we just don't think about those things in our life that seem so easy and effortless, but they're everywhere and they impact us daily and water impacts us. I mean, think about that concept. We don't think about this. Like we're made up of it. It's everywhere. It's all around us. It, it impacts us so significantly. And so I love this topic. I love that you're bringing attention to it. And I love that you're talking about how water can give to us and we need to give back to water because it is a life source for us um, in so many ways, not just physically, but also emotionally. It's just a beautiful concept. 
Yeah, we will have you back on again. There's no doubt. So much to talk there, about. There, there's more to I talk know, about. Absolutely. So, um, can you tell us where can people find out more about you? You talked earlier about you have a documentary series um, that's for free online that people can go and watch. Um, do you want to give some URLs out? Do you want me to do that? Yeah, uh, bluemindhealth.com will take you to the documentary series. Um, my personal website is just my name, wallacejnichols.com, and I hang it kind of. It's like my locker. Everything's in there. Uh, that'll WallaceJNichols.org or .com? Both. Both, both will work. Um, and uh, those are probably your, your two best, best bets. I'm, you use the hashtag Blue Mind on social media if you want to meet uh, all kinds of other people engaged in this conversation. And uh, I would just encourage you, know, you and everybody listening here, um, Next time you see water, next time you touch water, just reflect on this chat that we've had that you just listened to. And then let us know, reach, reach out and say, hey, you know, listen to your conversation. Um, that was the best shower I've had in years or that, you know, <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, you know, I was on my way to work and I just noticed the river in a different way. And it's gonna be a bigger part of my life now. Or That's where the rubber hits the road. So. Yeah. You know, these conversations rock and then, and then what? And so that's, that's our challenge to anybody listening is let us know, like, you know, reach out through this website and just say, Hey, that was great. Here's what I did. And let's get this conversation going. Yeah. Love it. Perfect. So bluemindhealth.com, wallacejnichols.org. You can always go to empoweringyouorganically.com. We will have all of the show notes there. We'll have links uh, to Dr. Wallace's website and any other information that we've covered here. This was, this was fascinating. I, thank you so much for oh, coming on. Thank you for giving us some of your time. Thank you for sharing with our listeners. Yeah, if, I, if we were in the same room, if I was there uh, with you, I would give you one of these, which is what I always do. It's a blue marble. I love that. that. I give as just a small symbol of gratitude. So uh, I have to do it virtually for now uh, until, yeah. until we meet. And uh, and then these just get passed on as a, a symbol of this conversation to people uh, we want to say thank you to. So I um, love what you guys are doing and the way you're, you're you know, reaching out to so many people on all these topics, um, you know, with their, their personal health and well-being in mind. I think it's, it's really awesome. So thank you for thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you for being here with us today. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Also, hashtag Blue Mind. Have a conversation about on Instagram, social media, get connected. Um, I, I think it's important if we're going to raise the level of consciousness of humanity, we have to stay connected. I think that's one of the good aspects of social media. I think there's a lot that, that can end up being negative, but that is a good one for us to unite uh, around movements that we really believe in, movements that can actually make this a better world, a better place, and make you a better person. So thank you again, Dr. Wallace, for being on here. Thank you, thank you everybody, for listening, and we will talk to you soon. Have a great day, everyone.